uh, George Bush Sr. cut that program off when thousands of AIDS patient, patients from California applied at the same time. So it's, uh, the people who were already admitted into the program uh, were able to still receive marijuana, but nobody else would be admitted into the program. Two of the four remaining patients live in Iowa. One is George McMahon, who has nail patella syndrome. The other is Barbara Douglas, who has multiple sclerosis. This is particularly interesting because I have a friend in Des Moines who has multiple sclerosis who has served time in jail uh, for less than a gram of marijuana. So Barbara Douglas uh, receives free marijuana from the federal government, which I disagree with. I don't think the taxpayers should be providing marijuana for anybody, uh, but she gets legal marijuana, he gets thrown in jail for it. In 2003, the Department of Health and Human Services uh, uh, applied for and received a patent uh, on cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are the therapeutic compounds that are in marijuana. Uh, they, they said that it's helpful for auto, autoimmune disorders, stroke, trauma, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and HIV dementia. So the same federal government that has marijuana as Schedule One is giving marijuana to patients across the country, and they have a patent saying that it is a medicine. Uh, last year, the Iowa Board of Pharmacy was sued by Carl Olson from Des Moines and also George McMahon, one of the federal patients, and they decided to do a seven-month-long scientific review uh, of the available research. They had over 12,000 pages of testimony and studies that were submitted, and there were about 140 people that testified. Uh, these are some of the people that testified, uh, people with spinal cord injuries, chronic pain, bipolar disorder, ADHD post-traumatic stress disorder, multiple sclerosis, cancer, epilepsy, gastrointestinal disorders. Um, I also have uh, a fellow patient from Des Moines named Jeff Elton. Uh, he has a gastrointestinal disorder. It's a diabetic neuropathic gastroparesis, which means the nerves have died in his, his stomach, which causes him to vomit daily. And for the rest of his life, uh, he'll be doing that. His doctor said the only option uh, for medication was Reglan, which you guys may have heard of because it's on TV all the time for class action lawsuits. It causes you to shake. Uh, even if you stop taking the medication, you, you'll have Parkinson-like tremors the rest of his life. Um, so uh, he tried using Marinol, which is THC, the active component in marijuana. That is actually Schedule Three. Uh, you can get that in Iowa in a pill form. But the problem with it is if you wake up in the middle of the night or you get up in the morning and you're uh, vomiting very heavily, uh, it's pretty difficult to force down a pill and then hope that you have the right dosage. The thing with the dosage is based on how much food is in your stomach uh, and certain other factors, your dosage changes every day. So you have to guess at how much Marinol you should take. Uh, if you take too much, you're not going to feel good. If you don't take enough, it's not going to give you any relief. And then you have to wait an hour and a half for it to take effect and hope that the vomiting will stop after an hour and a half. So with uh, what he uses is a vaporizer like I talked about before. That allows him to take a few uh, uh, vapors at a time. He can see if he needs more and uh, it literally goes into effect within seconds. Uh, other disorders are hepatitis C, arthritis, diabetes, cerebral palsy, cystic fibrosis, HIV AIDS, fibromyalgia, and glaucoma. Uh, the, the bill that we've had in the legislature the last couple of years doesn't include all these diseases, um, but I just wanted to give you guys an idea of uh, what some of the people were testifying about. One of the quotes from Vernon ben Benjamin, the head of the Iowa Board of Pharmacy, uh, during their final ruling, he said, most of the opiates that are on the market have probably a higher potential for abuse than what the marijuana does. Uh, a lot of times with pain, we prescribe Vicodin, hydrocodone, which are opiate-based medications like heroin, and they're incredibly addictive, and will base, uh, one, one way that it was described was uh, Dr. Coswell in Des Moines testified that uh, we can't actually do anything for anybody's pain, but we can make you so numb and zonked out that you won't complain about it anymore. So uh, obviously heroin is more dangerous than marijuana. We're using uh, drugs that come from the same plant, opium, that heroin does. Uh, Margaret with, uh, Whitworth t from the Board of Pharmacy talked about how uh, when marijuana was made illegal, uh, it, there were a lot of myths and stereotypes involved and a lot of racial and ethnic biases, 
but she did admit that she was also biased because her mother died from bone cancer. Uh, she quit morphine cold turkey because she didn't want to uh, be addicted to uh, such a horrible painkiller uh, in the last days of her life, and she did a, 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 a it was a procedure that really hadn't been done before where they actually cut the nerves to try to stop the pain and uh, ended up actually creating more pain. So Margaret said, I am biased. If there was anything I could have done for my mother, I would have done it. So after the seven month review, the Iowa Board of Pharmacy recommended that the legislature reclassify marijuana from schedule one into schedule two and they said that they were gonna provide a document that explains their reasons or thinking. Uh, however, they are now saying they're not gonna provide that document. They also asked the legislature to form a task force or study committee to re recommend how to implement a medical marijuana program in Iowa. Uh, it'd be composed of people from things like the Board of Pharmacy, uh, Board of Medicine and Nursing, uh, patients, law enforcement, the Attorney General's Office, substance abuse treatment. Uh, they wanted to, instead of just having the Board of Pharmacy make the decision, they wanted people from all walks of life to have input, which I think is a really good idea. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, uh, the House Majority Leader, uh, just said that they're not going to do the task force because of the law from 1979. In 1979, Iowa put marijuana in both Schedule 1 and Schedule 2, which conflicts with each other because one says accept a medical use and the other says no except in medical use. But what they said is that it's in Schedule II pursuant to the rules of the Board of Pharmacy. The board has paid $247,000 to establish these rules, but nobody has any idea what they did with that money. Um, during the final ruling, Terry Wachowski from the, uh, she's not actually a member on the board, she's a staff member, but she said the legislature at the time that this code change was made determined that it was the Board of Pharmacy that should adopt those rules. Rules. The board has the authority to adopt rules under which medical marijuana, uh, marijuana can be used for medical use. So the board is now saying they don't have that power, that the legislature needs to do it. Uh, clearly during their ruling, they said that they did have the power. So it's kind of being tossed back and forth. Uh, personally, I think that we should do a committee of people from all walks of life. Uh, but. There's no reason that the Board of Pharmacy should not be able to lead that. Uh, they can invite people in, and actually they have a, a rulemaking procedure that includes uh, asking for input from the public, and then that will go to a legislative committee for final uh, review. There are 14 states that allow medical marijuana right now, and also Washington, D.C. Uh, New Jersey was the last state to do so, and Michigan before that. Michigan had a ballot initiative where the public voted on it. We don't have ballot initiatives in Iowa, so we don't have that option, but it passed with 63% of the vote, and it passed in every county or district in Michigan. Uh, there have been a lot of polls around this area. There was a national poll this year by ABC that said 81% of the public supports medical marijuana. Illinois at 68%, Wisconsin 76%. Minnesota 64, North Dakota 63, and Nebraska 64. This last year, uh, the Iowa poll found that uh, we have 64% support here in Iowa. Uh, some supportive organizations are the Older Iowans Legislature, the Iowa Civil Liberties Union, the Iowa Board of Pharmacy, and the Iowa Ph Pharmacy Association. Uh, some of the large national organizations are the uh, American Academy of HIV Medicine, the American College of Physicians, American Nurses Association, the American Public Health Association, uh, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, uh, and obviously there's a lot more other ones, but those are kind of the big ones. So basically what it comes down to for me is, uh, I, I'm, most people consider this a liberal issue, but I'm a conservative Republican. I really do believe this is a conservative issue. It's about uh, keeping the government out of the doctor-patient relationship. If a doctor is willing to put his license on the line with a patient saying that the uh, benefits outweigh the costs, I don't see how the government can stand in the way of that. Uh, it's a perfect example of how bureaucracy uh, can slow down process and how uh, something that clearly has medical value has been uh, kept away from citizens in Iowa based on the inaction of the 